While you've probably memorized countless formulas for masses on springs and simple pendulums for AP Physics 1, how do we analyze simple harmonic motion in AP Physics C? When it comes to simple harmonic motion, the most vital and important equation to remember was not actually shown to you in AP Physics 1, and looks something like this, which relates the second derivative of some quantity x to itself. Essentially, whenever an object has this equation form associated with it, usually in the form of some torque or force equation, the object will undergo simple harmonic motion with an angular frequency omega. While this differential equation is not technically solvable in AP Physics C, let's see how we can use this equation to solve and describe any simple harmonic oscillator. Let's start with an oscillator we've looked at in AP Physics 1, a mass attached to a spring. At any point x based on the equilibrium point of the spring, the force on this mass can be given by Hooke's law, or negative kx. Using Newton's second law and realizing that the acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time, we can see the resemblance between our force equation and our generic simple harmonic motion equation. Rearranging to get it in the same format, we can see that our omega, or angular frequency of oscillation, is the square root of k over m that we memorized back in AP Physics 1. We can use this omega equation to arrive at other equations too. For example, period, like in circular motion, is simply 2 pi divided by the angular frequency, giving us another familiar equation. In essence, once we can describe an object, like our block of mass, in a form identical to our simple harmonic motion form, the equations stem from the coefficient omega, which we can find by simple inspection. Let's try analyzing a new type of oscillator, what's known as a physical pendulum. In contrast to the simple pendulums from AP Physics 1, which was just a ball attached to a string, a physical pendulum is any geometric object that is swung about a pivot. For example, let's take a look at a uniform rod of mass m and length l that swings at small angles around a pivot at one end of the rod. Because our object is no longer a single point mass, let's analyze the torques on this rod based on the pivot point. At any displaced angle theta from the vertical position, this rod will feel a torque of the force of gravity times a lever arm, L over 2 sine theta, as the force of gravity is applied to the rod's center of mass, or halfway down. Equating this torque to the torque equation, moment of inertia times angular acceleration, alpha, or the second derivative of theta, the equation is not quite in the right form due to the sine function on the theta. However, remembering that our oscillations were restricted to small angles, we can use small angle approximations from my math review video to get our equation into the form from before. From this equation, we can solve for our angular frequency omega as well as our period. In reality, this process, writing the torque equation based on the pivot point and using small angle approximations, will work for any shape or physical pendulum in any situation. Remembering to use the parallel axis theorem when the pivot point is not at the center of mass, the simple harmonic motion of any shape can be analyzed with the equation form shown at the beginning of this video. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about oscillations and simple harmonic motion from an AP Physics C standpoint.